Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then hi, my name's Sarah, I'm a doctor in the UK and I make videos about my life as a doctor and what I get up to in my free time. Now if you've been following me on Instagram over at Dr Sarah Nichols then you might know that I've had a lot of free time in the last few months. My boyfriend and I actually saved up for years and planned a big trip away for three months and um, we went to the Philippines, to Australia and to New Zealand and it was incredible, genuinely trip of a lifetime and we will never forget it. In fact, we actually got engaged while we were there, so it was just magical. And if you wanna have a look at our engagement video, then that is, I'll link it down below in the description box. If you are completely bored out of your brain, and let's face it, we're in lockdown, so you probably are, then you can have a look at my story highlights over on my Instagram. At the top of my feed, there is a Philippines and a New Zealand story highlight, so you can see what we got up to while we were away and just pretend that you're away traveling while you watch these videos. And if you enjoy them, then let me know because I have got a lot of video footage from while we're away and I might make it into a little vlog. Anyway, let's get into what you actually came here for. My first two shifts back at work in the emergency department. <laughs> of nervous energy before I came out of this run. I've been feeling quite anxious this morning actually and I think it's because I first thing I woke up and, and read the news um, and secondly I just didn't sleep that well last night. You know when you have that thing where you keep dreaming that you've overslept your alarm and even though I'm not starting work till 2 p.m. I just kept having those anxious dreams so it kind of set a bad mood for the day um, but since I've been out running I'm feeling so much more calm and centered and I always find that I do a lot of good thinking when I'm running and today I've been thinking about how I hope that this lockdown has brought some people um, the opportunity to start exercising more and getting outside I know that that sounds counterintuitive because we're all meant to be inside more but I know that a lot of people have been posting on Instagram and Facebook saying that they've been looking forward to their one hour of outdoors time and I just wonder if it's making more people take the opportunity to get outside and exercise go for walks go for runs go for a cycle if they're able to I know that I'm appreciating my outdoor time a lot more since this uh, since this lockdown I've been sticking to the real essential travel. Um, Vince and I have have only done one shop in two weeks and other than that we've only been outside once a day for a walk or a run um, and I'm hoping that most people are being sensible with it as well. Now that I've calmed my nerves with a run, it's time to get ready for work. So I jump in the shower and do my usual skincare regime. And as someone with oily skin who's very prone to spots, wearing a face mask all the time at work is not gonna be great for my skin, so I have to be really careful with this. And I'm taking with me some food and drink. I've got my frozen thermos bo bottle to make myself an iced coffee. I make a coffee and add a load of ice cubes. And I'm also taking a bean chili that I prepared earlier and some pre-cooked rice because I'm feeling lazy. And I take some fruit as well for a snack. Um, it's really hot in the emergency department so I like to take an iced drink with me and I'm just going to brush up on some reading in the garden to make me feel prepared for my shift. I've actually ended up arriving at work half an hour early but that's not a bad thing because I haven't worked for three months so I can go and check in with the consultant and find out if there's any new guidelines and things that I need to brush up on before I start seeing patients. When I finished three months ago I thought I was going to be really nervous to start back in any case after having so much time off work but I obviously never expected to be coming back to a pandemic so things have really really changed um, and although I've been feeling a little bit anxious this morning and kind of nervous to start I think that's actually really natural and normal um, for any job um, I think everyone can kind of relate to that kind of back to school feeling but what I'm really looking forward to is getting stuck back in, um, doing my bit for the NHS, as cheesy as that sounds. And I'm also really looking forward to seeing my colleagues as well. Right, time to get started. Oh, 
Up in the staff room, there's loads of food donations for us from local restaurants and delivery places. And our hospital is actually donating a lot of that food to food banks as well, which is just lovely. I've been working in the non-COVID bit of A&E tonight, but we still have to wear masks. We've been told that we aren't allowed to wear our uniforms home after shifts, so we have to go and get changed. This is to make sure that we're not bringing coronavirus into our houses. You put your stuff in a pillowcase and then shove it in the wash when you get home. So I finished my first shift back. I got through it, yes. I think your first one's always going to be the most nerve-wracking. Um, and I definitely wasn't as sharp as I have been in previous shifts. I think it's going to take me a good few shifts to get back into the swing of it. But I've got the first one done and out of the way, so that's the main thing. And it was really lovely to see loads of my colleagues. Um, and yeah, the emergency department just feels like home, so it definitely was nice to be back. Right now, I just need to go to bed. Three months is a really long time to be away from such a fast moving department. And I was actually quite worried about having potentially forgotten loads of skills or just not being up to date with the knowledge and guidelines and policies. And I was really worried about doing something wrong. Um, to be honest, the feeling that I had felt quite similar to how I felt a lot of the time in my first year as a doctor, as an F1. And I think it's just that that worry about being incompetent, really it just comes down to imposter syndrome and that is something that we've talked about a few times on Instagram and I know that a lot of you guys have brought that up with me and I will definitely make a dedicated video to that because it's really important and a lot of us suffer from that. So to overcome the anxiety um, of that first shift, I tried to just throw myself into it. I tried to put on a smile and talk to all my colleagues and tell them that it was my first shift back so that it kind of alleviated some of that anxiety and worry and that they could kind of hold my hand, not literally because of social distancing, but guide me through the shift and just make sure that I was okay. I made it really clear to my consultant as well that it was my first shift back and he was brilliant, made sure that I was up to date on everything. And I tried to remind myself that lots of people have three month breaks and a lot longer breaks. People go off on maternity leave and have career breaks for a lot longer than three months and so my my situation wasn't unique. Just just reminding myself of that actually made me feel better because it reminded me that you know I wasn't alone in this situation. There's a lot of people coming out of retirement to come and help the NHS at the moment and coming back from career break, breaks to help the NHS so I think really what I was feeling was completely normal. Also I think a lot of the anxiety that I felt before going to work was fueled by the media. We've all been watching the news and, and seeing all these like scary images online. So a lot of my, my anxiety and worry was, was fueled by that. I was really worried I was going to be walking into a war zone basically. So what is the reality? Well, of course I can only speak about my experience in the hospital that I work in and in the department that I work in. Our A&E layout has actually been changed so that we have an area for suspected COVID patients and an area for non-suspected COVID patients. And this is designed to make sure that staff and patients are kept as safe as possible and the system seems to be working really well as far as I can tell. The idea is to keep everyone separate so that if there was someone with suspected COVID symptoms and they went to that area but they turn out not to have COVID then they haven't been exposed to the virus. I worked in this area on Sunday and so I saw my first COVID patients there. To try and make sure that we aren't carrying the virus from that area to any other areas of A&E i.e. the non-isolation area, or any other areas of the hospital, or back to our cars, for example. There's a specific system that we have to follow about going in and out of that area. Only the people that work in that area on that shift are allowed to go in and out. At the start of the shift, you're told whether or not you are working in that area. And of course, people who can't work in that area, if they've got vulnerable people in their home or they've got their own health conditions, are obviously kept out of the COVID unit. So they've set up a system where there's an area where you can go into the COVID unit and you put on all of your PPE and there's someone with you who helps to check that you're putting it on correctly and then you watch someone else to make sure they're putting it on correctly. Once you're in that area, you stay in your PPE, you stay looking after the COVID patients and there's a real attention paid to hygiene. 
then when you come out of that area you have to go to a spe specific place to take off your kit and get rid of it and then you go out of a separate door so it's kind of like a one-way system our department just like everywhere else in the country is running low on PPE so we've been given really specific instructions about how to be really mindful of not wasting it making sure that only the specific uh, staff that need to go into the COVID unit go in with the idea of making sure that we don't run out so that all staff can be protected when we're caring for patients as well as this you might have seen on my Instagram that we all got fit tested for masks so that you can tell whether you or not you're putting your mask on correctly and it has actually and it is actually creating a proper seal a lot of people have been feeling a bit weird about the free meals and all of this sort of praise that's being laid upon the NHS but to be honest with you the way I've been thinking of it is that people in corporate jobs get free food all the time and so it shouldn't be thought of as a as a negative thing we shouldn't be feeling guilty for having these meals it's actually a wonderful treat and it's it's people showing their appreciation to us as healthcare staff so Thank you to anyone who has been part of that. It's just incredible what some people are doing for the NHS at the moment. One of my colleagues is actually living away from their family because they have a vulnerable person in their household and so they are sacrificing time with their partner and children in order to do their job, which I just think is incredible. Actually, since sitting down and filming this video, I've spoken to more colleagues who are also doing the same. There are a significant number of NHS workers living away from their families at the moment. If you've been watching Dr Hope's Sick Notes vlogs recently, then you might have seen that he talks about how there's not as many patients in the emergency department at the moment. And that's definitely something that we've experienced here as well. And although I haven't seen any official reports or statistics on this, I imagine that a lot of this is due to a reduction in the usual things that we would see, like car accidents, um, drunken nights out, fights, stabbings. The social isolation is taking away a lot of those sort of trauma cases. But the worrying thing is that there are still going to be people with the usual medical and surgical emergencies that do need to be seen. And one thing that we're particularly worried about is people just waiting at home because they're not sure whether or not they can go to hospital, whether the emergency department's open, um, or just genuine fear about going into hospital for the idea of catching COVID from another patient in the hospital or a member of staff. And I can understand that worry. I actually saw a few patients in this situation who were too scared to come in, and then by the time they got to hospital, their problem was a lot worse. And as I've said to those patients, it's always better to seek medical attention and find out that it was nothing than it is to wait on it and find out that it was something more serious that could have been dealt with more efficiently and more safely earlier on. So I know that 111 are busy and we definitely need to respect this service and not just call for any old problem, but we are still functioning as an NHS and we are still open for emergencies. And if you do have a genuine medical concern, then please call 111 and find out what you should do next. Okay, well, I've talked a lot in this video. Um, I just wanted to share with you a few of my experiences from my first couple of shifts back and I will definitely be doing some more vlogging soon because it's very different working at the moment and I'm sure that you guys want to keep up to date with what's going on on the front line. So if any of you guys watching are also on the front line, then please leave a comment down below. Let us know what your experiences have been like. I'm sure that lots of people in the comments will want to read what you've been up to and whether your experiences are different from mine. And, and in the NHS at the moment, I've got this real feeling of sort of we're all in this together. I don't know if any of you have been experiencing that, but it's it's quite a heartwarming feeling to to feel genuinely like a real cohesive team. Today's shout out doesn't go to a specific person. It is going to all of you key workers out there who are grinding away, keeping the country moving, everyone who is working in supermarkets, police, paramedics, teachers, waste collectors, anyone who is a key worker, thank you for what you're doing. We see you and we are so grateful for you for keeping our country going. And to everyone else, stay home, stay safe and stay strong. See you next time. <laughs>